Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem decode ways. So we're basically given a string of integers and we want to know with that string of integers, how many different ways can we take that string of integers and decode it into a string of characters? And we're given a specific mapping. So we have 26 characters and each integer maps to a different character. So we have an integer one, two, all the way to 26. And each of these integers maps to a different character. Now we don't actually need to build that string that we are mapping to. We just have to count the number of different ways we can decode it. So down here in the example, you can see a string like 12 can be decoded in two different ways. One way to decode it is just one and two because one maps to A, two maps to B. So that's one string, but remember we can have double digit values. So 12 actually maps to its own character. 12 itself maps to 11. So there are two different ways that this string, this string of integers could be mapped to a string of characters. So we return two in the output. Now, as you can see, it would be very simple if we just had numbers one through nine that map to characters, right? The problem comes from double digits, right? From 10, 10, a string like this can be taken in two different ways, right? One, zero, or just 10, right? So that's where the complexity is gonna come from. From a string like this, we could have two different decisions. So we're gonna be using a decision tree to kind of figure out all the possibilities with this. At least that's gonna be the brute force approach. The only problem is that there's gonna be a few different edge cases we have to worry about. For example, we could have a string like this. We could have a string like zero, six, right? How, what, what exactly does this map to? Well, zero is not even in our, our input, right? Basically zero itself does not map to any character, right? Six could map to a character, but zero does not. So if we ever get a zero, you know, a string starting with zero, that's invalid. So we have to return zero in that case, this cannot be mapped to any, uh, this cannot be decoded in any way, so we return zero. Okay, let's try to figure out the brute force approach to solving this problem, and in doing that, we'll try to figure out some of the edge cases that we're gonna have to deal with. Suppose we have a string like this, one, two, one. How many different ways can this be decoded? Well, let's say we start at the beginning, right? We could take one by itself, right? That's gonna be some character, right? We don't really care what it is, but it's gonna be some character. Now, we could also take the first two characters by themselves, 12 by itself, right? Because that's valid, right? So that's another decision. Starting from here, we could take one or we could take 12. And by the way, if this was a zero, we definitely could not take it. Then we'd have to just stop immediately, right? Because we can't start with a string starting at zero. But if we had something like one zero, right, a 10 maybe, then we can take it because it's okay if a zero comes after a one. And so basically any, any integer by itself, right, one, two, three, four, five, any integer by itself except for zero can be taken, right? So basically we can create any string of one, you know, one number from one through nine except zero, right? We're just not including zero. It cannot be taken by itself, but any from one through nine are okay, right? So what we're gonna see here is, okay, if we went down this path where we chose a one, then the next character we're gonna be at is the two, right? Of course, two can be taken by itself, right? Any number except for zero can be taken by itself. It can be decoded in that way. So when we're at this one, or one, or when we're at this position, we can take two by itself, or we can take 21, right? 21 is also some character, I don't know what it is, but remember we had values from one through 26 right? So having a 20, 21 is completely fine. That will decode to its own character, right? Now, of course, if we had something like a 27 over here, then we could not go down this path, right? Then we just would not go down this path because 27 does not map to any character, right? So we're kind of learning that, you know, anything, the integers have to be within one through 26, right? And this 27 is not. Okay, and so down this path, we reach the end, right? We had a one and we had a 21, right? So there's no more characters to choose from here. So basically this was one way that we could decode this input. So when we reach the end, we're gonna count that as a one, right? That means we found a single way to decode this input. So this was a good base case where we return one. 
And from here, let's continue this one. So we left off at two, then we get to one. Can one be taken by itself? Of course it can, it's not a zero, so we can take it by itself. And so then we reach the end of the string again. So this is another good base case. One, two, one is a valid way to decode this string. So if we started with one, you know, over here, we could decode this in two different ways. If we start with 12, how many ways can we decode it? Well, if we start with 12, then we just have one character left, the one character. Uh, so that can be decoded another way. So this is another good base case. So basically, we saw that we have three different ways that we can decode this string. Now, just to kind of add a couple values to the string, what if we had something like 31 after it? So then, you know, let's say we left off over here. You know, we can choose the three by itself, right? Because any character except for zero can be taken by itself. Could we take 31? We could not, right? The same reason we can't take 27, we can't take 31 because it's it's greater than 26, right? How are we gonna determine that in the code? You can do it a lot of different ways. What I'm just gonna say is we can only take double digit values if the, the first digit starts with a one because if it starts with a one, then for the second digit, we can take anything from zero to nine, right? Anything from zero to nine, because then, you know, this this, dig, this double digit value will either be between 10 to 19, right? And this value is less than 26. So that's perfectly fine. But if we start with a two digit, if we start with a two digit, then the second digit has to be between zero and six because 26 is gonna be less than or equal to 26. But if this became too large, if it became a 27, that's not less than or equal to 26. So we can't do that. That's how I'm gonna decide it. Now, what if the first digit started with a three? you know, or, or a four or a five or anything, that's never gonna work because if we're gonna have some other second digit here, it's never gonna be less than or equal to 26, right? It just won't be. So we're only gonna have uh, two decisions, right? We're only gonna have two branches if our first digit is a one or if it is a two. So this is kind of the brute force approach that I'm showing you. But it might not be super efficient because we could have two decisions at every single uh, every single position. Then our time complexity would be something like two to the power of n, where n is the length of the input string. So how can we kind of do a little bit better? Well, notice the sub problem that we're doing. For example, when we take when we take just one by itself and consider, okay, this is just going to be one way that we decode it. Then we're asking, okay, how many different ways can we decode the remaining of the string, right? That's the sub problem over here. We're asking how many different ways can we decode 21? When we take the first two characters, 12, then we're asking how many different ways can we decode the string one? Right, so that's kind of how the sub problem is going to work. The sub problem is just going to be some portion of the string, you know, for example, you know, starting from from here all the way to the end of the string, how many ways can we decode this? Or how many ways can we decode this? Or how many ways can we decode the entire thing, right? To, to be able to solve this problem, how many ways can we decode this? We have to solve the sub problem, how many ways can we decode everything except the beginning? And so basically, you know, how many different ways can we cache it? Well, we're gonna have some index i, which could either be here, or it could be here, or it could be here. It's just gonna designate starting from here and taking the remaining portion of the string, how many ways can we decode it? So basically, the dimension of our cache is gonna be n, right? So that's kind of, that's also gonna be the time complexity because every time we get to a position i, at most, we have two different decisions to make, right? So that's gonna be an O of one operation making those two decisions. It's not like we're gonna have to run through a loop or or anything like that. We're not gonna have any loops. And you'll see that when I write out the code. If this is the size of our cache, this is also gonna be the size of our time complexity. And this is also gonna be the size of our memory. This is because it's the size of the cache. Now, just so you know, I think this problem actually can be solved when we write out the dy actual dynamic programming solution, not using a cache, not doing it recursively, but actual dynamic programming. It can be solved with O of one memory because one thing you might notice, okay, when we wanna know how many ways can we decode this entire string? Well, you know, when we're at a pointer i, we can either take this character by itself, in which case then we're gonna shift i by one over here and ask, you know, what's the result of this sub problem? Or if we take the first two characters, 12, then we're gonna ask, okay, what's the result of this sub problem, right? So we're either gonna, so basically, you know, to set dp of i, we're either gonna ask dp of i plus one or i plus two. Two, right? Those are the only ones that we would need to look at. 
right? To, to compute a value like this, we'd only need to at most look at two different positions that come after it. So, you know, when we have our DP cache, we actually don't need a full array to solve this problem. We could do it with two, just two variables, similar to like a house robber problem approach to dynamic programming or like a Fibonacci sequence problem, right? But with that being said, I think we're ready to get into the code now. Now let's write out the code. So the first way I'm gonna show you the solution is basically the recursive caching solution, the O of N time and memory solution. So we're gonna initialize our cache. We are gonna put a single value in here. Basically the entire length of the string is going to map to one because if we get an empty string, we want to return one in that case. That's just kind of our good base case, right? And then we're ready to write out the recursive function. I'm just going to call it DFS, pass in a single variable i. Basically, i is the position that we're at in our string s. Now, one base case is if i is in our DP, meaning either it's already been cached or i is the last position in the string, in which case that's our base case, right? And then we would just return DP of i. So that's you know, our good base case, it's either been cached or, you know, it's just the end of the string. Our bad base case is going to be if it's not the end of the string, then we have to check what character it is. If the character is starting with zero, right? If the string is starting with zero, then it's invalid, right? There's no ways to decode a string that starts with zero. So then we have to return zero. So that's like our bad base case. So, so these are the two main base cases that we have. But remember, if it's not zero, that means it's between one through nine, in which case uh, we know we can take this value as a, di a single digit, right? So then the sub problem becomes DFS of I plus one, right? So that's what the result is going to be. We're just going to call DFS on I plus one because we took the character at I as a single digit, right? But we know that there are some cases where we can also call I plus two. Now, what's a good way that we can write out that case? Well, first, uh, let's. this is one of the ways you can do it. I'm sure there are better ways, but basically if I plus one is less than the length of the string, basically if we do have a second character that comes after the current one, right? Because we're looking for a double digit character. So if I plus one is in bounds and either the character S of I starts with a one, right? S of I is a one because if it starts with a one and there is a second digit, that means that definitely we can take a double digit value, right? Because anything between 10 all the way to 19 is a double digit value, right? So if it, as long as it starts with one, we know we can make a double digit value. Or the other case is basically I'm trying to figure out a good way to format this in a readable way, but basically, or if S of I is equal to two, right? It starts with a two, but if it does start with a two, then the second digit, right? S of I plus one, must be between zero and six, right? How can we check that in Python? At least we can check okay, if this uh, character happens to be in this substring one, two, three, four, five, six, right? Basically we're saying is that second digit any value between zero through six? At least this is a clean-ish way to write it. So I encourage you to reread this uh, condition if you don't fully understand it, but it's basically what I mentioned in the drawing explanation. We're basically checking if this double digit value is between 10 to 26, so then we can actually take it as a double digit value. If we can do that, then to our result, we're gonna add uh, DFS of I plus two, right? It makes sense we're doing I plus two because this is a double digit value. The sub problem becomes I plus two. And then once we're done with that, we can just go ahead and return the result. But before we do, don't forget to cache it. So DP of I is gonna be equal to result. We're caching it and then we're gonna return the result. And then uh, you know, when we actually wanna return the result in the outer function, we can just return DFS of zero because we wanna know how many ways can we decode the string starting at index zero. And I ran it and as you can see, it works and it's pretty efficient. Let me just copy and paste the actual dynamic programming solution. I don't wanna waste too much time to write it out because it is very similar and I think if you can come up with the recursive approach, the logic for the dynamic programming solution is also pretty simple. We have the exact same cache. The only thing is we're doing this bottom up. So we're starting at the end of the string, iterating in reverse order. We have the same base cases. Basically, if S of I starts with zero, then the DP is going to be zero, right? And basically, you know, this is the same as these two lines of code where 
where we just return zero. Else, meaning, you know, that means it's a digit between one through nine, then we can call dp of i plus one. That's the same as when down here when we call dfs of i plus one. Now this bottom part is the exact same as the if statement we had down below, right? You can see the logic is the exact same. You know, the, the condition is the exact same, only difference is here we're saying dp of i plus two is added. Down here, instead of using dp of i plus two, we actually called the recursive function dfs. So this, the logic is definitely pretty similar. And in this solution, at least the memory is O of N, but I do think that you can, instead of having an entire cache or array or whatever you're using, you can just have two variables. So I hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot and I'll hopefully see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.